um, yesterday we and now we all, we all have a, a very basic version of the string calculator. What we're going to do now is we're going to try to do to attempt to create a console application that uses the string calculator. Okay. Um, so we're going to try and do it with a TDD. We're going to try to do a test first, but first I want to explain how uh, how my design choices choices are going to work. So to understand how to test first a console application, let's see what a console application looks like. So if I go to my solution and I create the uh, add new project um, console application, I'm going to call it um, string master because I want to be able to say, say string master.exe. What is the structure of the string master? Well, it has a program class. It's not public. It has a main method, which is the main entry point. Let's get rid of this. And that's not public either. Now, if I want to test drive giving inputs to a console application, instead of creating a new process, etc., I can simply use in-memory calls from my unit tests to actually call this method, the main method. So if I wanted to try and do this, so let's say I would create a new uh, class here, and I'd call it, usually I'd put this class in a separate project called uh, String Master Tests, or String Master Unit Tests. In fact, you know what, let's do that. Uh, add new project, class library, string master dot unit tests. Uh, you don't have to do it, you can just watch for now because you're going to do the whole thing later anyway. For now it's important that you just get the concepts and the idea of uh, what do I, what's optional and what, what can I actually change to make things more testable. I'll just rename this class um, and since what I'm going to test is program, the program class, I'm going to say program tests. Um, also let's set the um, NuGet package, so package manager console, install package and unit. Okay, let's create a test fixture. Create a new test. Um, now, in this test, the unit of work is main, because that's the main static method, because that's my entry point, and I'm not going to expect to do anything else but just call the entry point and then check that there was some kind of output to the screen. And we're going to find out how to do that. So, main. Uh, now, a basic scenario: How do I prove? that if I send in some inputs to the main method, it actually uses string calculator to write to the screen. Well, remember uh, on the first day I said I don't want to, uh, I treat everything between the inputs and the outputs as a black box, so I don't care if it uses string calculator or not. I just care that something was written to the console, that is the result. And then I'll just hook up all the internal stuff to make the result happen. Um, so I can say uh, two numbers and write their sum to the console. Console. Uh, writes is, uh, maybe it's not right, but it uh, calls the console with their sum. The reason I'm using the word calls here is because I can't really use the real console. I'm not going to test this visually. So the console is in fact some kind of dependency, something that I cannot control. So I'm going to have to somehow replace it or I'm just some instead of checking that it, the console writes something, I'm just checking that the console was called with the correct parameters. Because if it was called with correct parameters, I can assume that the UI looks the way I want it to look because I don't have control of the UI. I can just replace it with something else. So I use the word calls to, to say that there is, 
that the end result is a call to an external system instead of just returns something or throws an exception or changes state. Now it's a call to an external system that's beyond my control, which is a user interface of some sort. Now if I wanted to just call main, if I just say program, um, there's no such thing because program is not public. If I go to program, I can actually make it public. And personally, I don't have any program in me, a pro problem in making program public because it's an entry point anyway. It's not like uh, it has to be hidden. It's a console application. Now, if I go here, Reshopper will tell me, hey, do you want to just reference and use program? I'm going to say yes. But now, main is not public either. So I'm going to make it public to make it more visible. So I can actually invoke it. Now again, because this is an entry point, it shouldn't be a problem at all. It's an entry point, so anyone should be able to invoke it. It would just wasn't currently meant for uh, the use of unit tests, so I'm just making it usable by unit tests. But in other cases where I make things public, maybe it's more of a security risk. Maybe there's a problem there. And in that case, maybe in terms of design, um, um, I can choose to make things public because I think it's a better design. Or if I think it's not a good design to make it public, but for testability I want it to be, I can put it uh, uh, inside, um, uh, uh, what do you call these, if, like debug, or if test, like this, and if. So now only during my tests will this thing be public and callable. So I can put things in um, in compiler flags if I wanted to hide them. Another possibility, if I wanted to make things unhidden, is to not make them public, but make them internal. Now, internal means that it's public only to the current assembly. But I can also add a special attribute in the um, in the properties of the project inside assembly info cs and kind of say this assembly dot internals visible to um, my test assembly whatever the name of the assembly is and assuming that nothing is strongly named it, this should be enough and then it will look public to a specific assembly because it's been friended um, if you have um, a, an assembly that has been uh, strongly named, then you're going to have to put the strong, uh, the public key. So it looks a bit weird, it's a bit long to generate, but it's still at the end of the day just a string that you put in this attribute, and, and suddenly anything that's internal becomes public to that assembly. So you have ways around this if you still want to keep things hidden. For us, right now, it doesn't make any, sen any sense not to just make it public. So if I go back to my tests now, program.main, I can now simply in memory invoke uh, this uh, function. So I can say a new string with the value of 1 and 2. Okay. In fact, I don't even need this. So now I'm able to send an input into my console application in memory, and it's fully under my control. But how do I know that something was written or something was calling the console application? If I wanted to replace the console application with something else, actually in the .NET API, we have a built-in way to replace the console. Now, I'm not sure why this API exists, but probably because someone wanted to test it at the Microsoft headquarters as they wrote the thing. So they wanted to redirect output to various sources. So what we can do is we can use a special API built in called console.setout. Now, console.setout takes a text writer, which is an abstract class. So there are multiple things inheriting from text writer. So how do I know which one I, I can send? What are all the things inheriting from text writer? 
This is another thing I like in ReSharper is that I can say text writer and then control alt h to see the hierarchy of this class or in this case let's see ReSharper um, inspect or type hierarchy yeah that should have worked oh because I don't have a using that's why control alt h now this is the text writer and what I can also do let's see Kind of look at this. Currently, there's nothing that seems to be inheriting from it. Maybe I'm missing something. Because um, obviously, there are things that inherit from it that I'm, I'm, I'm sure there are. So let's say text writer. Hmm, interesting. I'm not sure why. Um, let's see. What if I just say uh, string writer? Well, that that exists. So I'm not sure why I'm not seeing the type hierarchy right now, but I can tell you that the string writer is in the, uh, is a version of text writer. Um, maybe it's a bug, or maybe I've just missed something right now. So I can say string writer sw equals a new string writer. Now a string writer writes to a string builder or an in-memory string so I can say uh, just use my string builder here so I'm going to create a string builder use it inside the string writer and give it the string writer now from now on everything that I write to the console if I do this console.write blah my string builder is going to contain that string the console is actually not going to be written at all the output has been redirected so I've, I've essentially replaced the console output with my own output which is a string builder which I have full control of and it's all in memory so now I can actually assert at the end of the test that the string builder contains a specific string I can assert that it also equals a specific string but that's not usually a good idea because that will make the test more fragile. You usually just want to test that a string contains something because a lot of times strings are a form of UI so they can contain extra new lines, the dates. We, we care about specific things inside the string. So instead of this, I'm going to say we call it with main but before that we replace because otherwise if I replace it after the call after the act it's not going to be written to then we can assert and if I wanted to assert on strings there is a, a, a special class I can use built into annulate it's called string assert it's built into annulate I can say string assert and I can use contains or ends with or matches a regular expression so string assert contains um, three from the uh, string builder dot to string. Okay, I can also rename it to uh, let's say fake output. Maybe that's a better name. Okay, so that's an example of how I can take control of a console output and actually use it as a, as a test-driven mechanism to, to prove that something should be done. Now currently, if I run this test, it's going to fail. And I want you to get to this stage where the, you, this test actually fails and make it pass as simply as possible. But in this case, what we're doing is we're not going to just use, say, return 3. Because what we want, the purpose of this, is to connect two layers together. The purpose is to connect the string calculator layer, which we build separately and in test driven, into one layer up, which is this layer. And we can just have a couple of tests that prove that the layer works. We don't have to write all the tests for string calculator again. We're, what we're testing is that we can shoot one thing into uh, the input, and we get back another thing in the output, and we assume that everything is actually connected because of that. We, we, it's okay to have some knowledge about the architecture 
but we don't have to care that it calls a specific string calculator class. Okay? Questions? Okay, so we're going to split into uh, a, a pair, but it's going to have to be different. So um, today you guys can, uh, can pair up, and you, you'll be working alone today, and tomorrow we're going to switch again. Okay? So, by the way, I wanted to add one more thing. In terms of refactoring to make this test, I wouldn't do all these three lines in the test. What I would do is, after the test would pass, is I would refactor something like this. Extract a method, call it um, replace console, and I would change the var to use a string builder to make things more readable. So string builder fake output equals replace console. Call the program and then con make sure that the fake output contains something. And then I would use that. I th it would make the test more readable, especially if I'm going to replace this multiple times. So it becomes a utility method. Yes? 